All right, boys and girls, we are back. Brand new Take Aim podcast. Excited to get the show out and excited I got to sit down and chat with my buddy Cam Coble. Cam is infamous on Facebook, to say the least. He scores a lot of deer, and uh, he's a Boone and Crockett scorer, Pope and Young scorer. He's always at the Iowa Deer Classic, and, uh, and like I said, just kind of everybody knows Cam. He scores a lot of big deer, scores a lot of net big deer. If they didn't grow it, Cam doesn't score it. So he's, he legitly is the man to talk to about uh, some of the big deer that he saw throughout the country. And, you know, a lot of big deer from Iowa, some from Kansas. Awesome buck this year from Ohio. So we talked about all those. Cam shares a little bit of each that he scored, a little story of each, which is awesome. And uh, just really cool show to kind of cover some of those big deer from this year. Uh, you know, so thanks so much for Cam for being on. As you guys know, we love to talk big deer and big stories, so this show was really cool because we took, we even Cam scored Mark Luster's deer that, uh, you know, we had Mark on this show and talked about that deer just within 48 hours of Mark killing it. So, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy. As you know, deer season never ends, guys. We'll see you again next week. And guys, if you haven't had the chance, to use the code TAKEAIM10 to save on hunt stand today. Upgrade to the pro version and turkey season's coming, so it's a great time that you guys can actually use that to your benefit. Turkeys, you know, we roost a lot of turkeys at night, set up for the morning. You can actually mark that roost spot using the Hunt Stand app. So make sure you check that out. Use the code TAKEAIM10. Download Hunt. All right, boys and girls, we are live. Brand new Take Aim podcast. Excited, as always, to get another show out. And excited to be with the man whose famous catchphrase is not bad, Cam Coble from Iowa. So what's happening, Cam? Oh, not much. Just finally winding down from my shed hunting this spring. Yesterday was my last day. I walked plenty and found some good sheds. Found, I don't know, enough. <laughs> Never enough, but enough. I had fun. But You always um, find some good sheds, though, down there in Iowa. Yeah, I think last year was better for quality and numbers. I, I probably walked more last year, I'm thinking. I thought I'd keep track every time I went this year, so I did. I'd log it in a spreadsheet on my phone on Excel, and I ended up walking 170 miles from the uh, first part of February to the last day of March. Wow. But, so 170 <laughs> miles, what did that turn into shed-wise for you? Ah, uh, 58, which... You know, those guys have found way more than that. <laughs> to me, that's good, though. <laughs> I never found over, like, 30 years before. I mean, every year I've been out here, it's been almost a uh, new personal best year for me, it seems like. But, um, yeah, I found some good ones, though. And half probably public, half private. So lucky to get on some good land. Some friends let me get on and pick up some sheds. And um, you got to have the antlers there. They're not too hard to find if you... You got the deer there and the antlers there. Get on them. Yeah. But, uh, afraid, I mean, part of it is walking, and you walked a lot. So, I mean, you've earned you earned yeah. 58 sheds out of that, you know, but that's a ton of walking. Yeah. That's some impre- impressive ground, especially when you said at least 80 or 90 miles of that was public, which is pretty wild. Would you yeah, say, Cam, you, say so. you found as many on the public as private or vice versa? I would say more on the private, but I did find my biggest antlers on public this year, which was kind of interesting. Matt yeah. said I found I picked up off public, and it was such a quick hunt. I, a buddy was going to try to get me on a piece of private, and we couldn't get stuff arranged. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to scrap this day. So I ran down to a public spot and a little bit of ways from there. And two and a half mile walk, I got three antlers that day. and a real good, my best set of the year, best shed of the year. And, Nothing super crazy big, but they're pretty nice to me. It should be real good in this fall. What uh, what would you say they are? Is it a mainframe ten or what kind of shed is it? Um, yeah, mainframe ten. The, the his right side was chewed pretty bad. I scored him just for the heck of it because I like to know. As he sits right there with the seventeen to spread, he'd been about one hundred and fifty-five gross. Dang, that's a so, uh, that's a nice buck. For, yeah, and they were. They, yeah. It's cool. They were sitting. I walked by, and they were just sitting right beside each other. I just laughed, and I just almost had to pinch myself and say, "You kidding me?" It was raining that day, and cold and blustery. And you know, God probably shouldn't have been out there antler hunting, but I like those cloudy days. Uh, you can see a lot better. The antlers just seem to pop. A rainy, cloudy day is the best day to shed hunting. These last few days, I've it's been 
sun shine and it's been cold but the sun's been shining and it creates shadows. I just don't like it as well. Yeah. You like the overcast days a little better? You think the antlers pop a little more? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you ask any serious shed hunter they'll tell you the same thing that overcast days, rainy days, cloudy days are the best shed days. Now I have to guess. Throughout the season, Cam, did you hear of anybody or anybody in your kind of inner circle there in Iowa that uh, came up with a good set of sheds or a couple sets? Mm, let me think about that. Um, hmm. Yeah, a, bu- a buddy over the eastern part of the state found a real big set. I don't know what the numbers are on them. I asked him. Uh, I'm sure they'll be – they look – to me, just look at the pictures, they look over 170 with no spread. Wow, that's a big deer. Oh, yeah, I, I, he's not put a number on him yet. I, I asked him a couple weeks ago, but I know I finally picked up on the side. And other guys have found good ones. I'm, uh, I really can't think of anybody. Uh, uh, some, uh, some guys I used to go with a couple years ago, one of, one of his uh, guys' brother found a real good set about a week ago towards the tail end of his shed hunting. They looked in the 160s or so. Yeah, that's good to hear, too. Uh, but other than that, um, no. I haven't. Uh, I think people can stay tight, more tight-lipped about sheds yeah. than they alive, potentially. And I don't I don't blame them, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame anybody yeah. for that, either. I kind of would be, too. Yeah. And, you know, that's... Yeah. And you know how it is. It, it's kind of like guys catching a big fish. The first thing they yeah. ask is, where did that come from? Well, you know, oh, yeah. you put I mean, it out like, there. That's like, what people like, are going to ask. Yeah, I like sharing pictures and, you know, but uh, you can't share everything. I, I understand that, so. Yeah, it's hard to share every bit of information. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I mean, I don't mind sharing pictures to help people out. It's fun. It's all why we do it, so. Yeah, for sure. So, with that being said, if you uh, – no Cam, he is infamous for scoring deer on Facebook. And Cam, you score for Boone and Crockett and the Iowa Trophy record books. Is that correct? Pope and Young, Boone and Crockett, and uh, the Iowa Trophy record books. Just a, uh, um, they take the numbers from Iowa Deer Show, I believe, and they put them on an online. Yes, yeah. so I really don't know that it's a real like a uh, certified thing. Is it ex- like that? Yeah. Well. They get a lot of the numbers from the from um, the Iowa Deer Show every year. I don't know that you know. I've never sent a number or scored you into anywhere. It's the state book. So when people ask if Iowa has a state book, I know they do, but I don't know where it per se goes to. I, I know I should probably know that, but I think a lot of those numbers come from Iowa Deer Show over the years. They compile them, and that's just where they you know they yeah. put them in their own base. Right. Yeah. Not that's a whole, a... Not a whole, it's not a structure, I should say. I guess it's a. Or streamlined as as other books, but we're organization. But you score the show as well, the Iowa Iowa Deer Classic. So, you know, I I thought, uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Cam, I thought 2020 was a really good year for Iowa, like for upper It was real good. It it, it was strong. A lot of of big typicals. It was surprising. Typical deer, you'd think there'd be a lot more big typicals every year, but um, non typicals always seem to outweigh them and be more big non tips. This year was a strong typical year. There was a lot of big t- non tips too, but there was a lot of big typicals. I think I, if I look back at my numbers, just from what I ran through, because someone's asked if I put a final post on Facebook, I think it was 17 that netted over 170 typical at the Deer Show. That's just what showed up at the Deer Show. 17, 17 over 170. Over 170. Mm-hmm. As typical. <laughs> yes, typical. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And uh, four of them went over what? Four of them were over. I believe four were over one eighty-five. Wow. One, I think so. Four were. I have to dig through my notes, which I don't have on me right now. I need to know the stuff off the top of my head, but I know there was. I scored two of them, and that would have been three. At least three over one eighty-five. Certain on that. You're talking net score, right? Net score, yes, yeah. sir. Mm-hmm. Super impressive. So. Yep. What uh between the Iowa Deer Classic and I know you you know you scored a lot of deer for the Quest Hunt Hunt Co. Shout out yep. to those guys and know yep. uh, those guys Brian and Jeff and them and uh, you know appreciate them and the uh, awesome uh, you know if you guys haven't checked yep. it out make sure to check out Quest. But uh, between the Iowa Deer Classic and that Cam, what were you kind of most impressed with? What 
a deer that you saw that uh, you're just kind of blown away with? <laughs> I think everybody can speak and agree with this. That uh, Matt Brunswick out of Ohio dropped out a um, giant of his down to the show. He was in the uh, quest hunt competition, and he brought it down there. He was part of a team, you know, him and his teammate. They had, you have to bring your deer down to the banquet to have it scored, or if it's already scored, then just bring the score seat and they, you know, look over this and that. And that deer had some of the most shock value I've seen on any deer in several years. I mean, it was, we're talking Coke can bases, uh, big mass, big giant mass all the way through. Just, just an incredible deer. I mean, pictures don't do that thing any justice. You hold it and I just laugh at it so big. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just a big as they come. I mean, the score doesn't reflect that deer's true size. Only, only 245 gross, which is amazing, but it, it looks way bigger than that. It is so big. That deer was a standout. A yeah, real, des- describe that deer's frame to everybody, because that, that deer was pretty pretty unique and just absolutely huge, and, and like you said, when you see it, you're like, that's got to be one of the biggest deer ever, because the way it, it, it just looks, it's unreal. that it, it It's actually unreal. It only scored 245. And it netted, I believe, um, 232. And that's, that's Boone and Crockett score. Give me one second. I'll tell you exactly. Um, I got a lot of stuff on my phone, and I like I, said, I and I and I know what the uh, numbers exactly are, but I can I can tell you a real uh, uh, basic uh, number on it here. But uh, I'm going to tell you exactly. So I know I thought it was, but the, the mainframe the mainframe uh, typical. Let's see, it was a six by four. I believe yeah, six six by four typical is 194. Typical frame goes to 194 on that deer. Wow. Which is, wow. Which is, I mean, yeah. The, the mass was big, but the, the bases were seven three eighths. I mean, big, big, heavy mass. I mean, you know, I've scored a lot of big deer over the past couple of years, a lot of booty crocodile deer, a lot of 200 inch deer. And I don't, I know for certain, I don't think I've ever scored anything that broke into the seven inch range on the, on the, on the first mass measurement. That's a big time world class number when you get in that seven inch range. Yeah, that, that's on, insane. On, a, what? On, a, on, a, on any mass measurement, six is incredible, and six is really, really good. I mean, the deer had the deer had over forty inches of mass, easy. Just look at the scores, and the numbers. Cam, do you remember what county that deer came out of? Ohio. Hancock. Hancock. Up okay. north. Up north. Yep. Yep. So I was telling my buddy there was a score over there in Ohio. That he should score. It was killed around him. I thought it was Hamilton for a long time. And he said, no, it's not. I said, I think it is. And I, I should have known my county is better than that. It was Hancock for sure. Though. But yeah, that, that deer, when you see that deer hold that deer in person, that thing was just, that blew you away. That thing was so big. Everybody wanted to get their picture with that deer and hold it. And it was crazy. And super nice guy that shot it. Matt was real nice to talk to and all. And, Great buck. Uh, did, he, did he tell you a little bit about that deer and, or or the hunt itself, Cam? A little bit. He knew how big it was. Cause I, I was asking him when they shoot these big deer how big they look coming in. He, they just, you know, just said it was look really big and <laughs> to keep it together. <laughs> huh. I, I think he shot at 18 yards, he told me. Wow. Yeah, but it, that thing was, and I maybe it ran, I don't know, inside it fell over, but. That's just what I what he had relayed to me the info and we're talking about it and holding the rack. But pretty incredible deer. That's that's one of the bigger deer I've seen in several years. Or like I said, are handled or and the scores. That's what I said. Scores at the number because that thing looks bigger than a lot of two fifty, two sixty class deer. I mean yeah. that thing will hang with anything. Actually, Cam, what we'll do is uh, do you have a picture of you with that deer scoring it by chance? Um. I did not score it, but I do have a picture with me and Matt Brunswick um, holding that deer because I just okay. wanted to get a picture of him. But send, I do have a picture that, of him. Yeah, send that picture to me. I'll use that for the media art for this podcast. Yeah, um, I will do that. I but another that. great deer, I know, uh, you know, t- we we had him on the podcast, but you know Mark Luster, your buddy. Uh, oh, man, yeah. He, he yeah. shot a great typical as well that, uh, you know, again, we had on the podcast a deer called Zeus, if you guys remember listening. But, man, tell us about that, Cam, and just how that deer <laughs> scored because that deer had some great mass. 
as Jeez, well. Jeez, that deer, that deer was incredible. The funny story. So I, I heard Mark shot this big deer. I've done Mark for 10 years or so. And I heard Mark uh, shot this deer. Because uh, his son told me on Facebook Messenger. And um, I said, well, I'll get over and look at it one day. And he said, no. Nah. His son says, well, you probably ought to come over and look at that deer. And he's like two hours away. I said, I'll get over there eventually. He, said, he was real adamant about it. He said, you probably ought to come look at it. You'll probably, you, you need to come see this deer. I said, okay. So I come over and dream scored. I just, they, threw, they threw a number out at me. And I was like, it's that big, really? I mean, I'm not doubting pictures, but sometimes pictures are hard to tell. They just are. I mean, you look at a deer, and like I said, it's just a number, but sometimes they're hard to tell. So, so at this point, had you seen a picture already? I had seen pictures, oh, but I just didn't think it was. I just didn't think it was. You know, I I knew it was big, but um, the way this I'll describe it to you is when I got over there finally, I didn't know where anybody was at. They were behind the barn or taking pictures. They had some, but it was a real good camera photographer taking pictures. You know, and um, his son came out to the truck, and I got out, and I said, "Oh, where's it at?" And he said, it's "Behind the barn or taking pictures." I said. And, my first initial reaction when I seen it, I walked around the corner of Mark's barn where he keeps his uh, car, that Chevy Nova he has, and I walked around the corner of the barn there, and I could see him with, and the deer from a distance. And the best way to describe it is it looked, the rack was so big it looked cartoon characters is how big it looked. That was my first initial reaction. I just laughed, and I said, I said that thing looks fake. It's so, it was so big. And the body, the body was huge on the air, but it just didn't look that big because the rack just overpowered it. It was just that big. Wow. Was it I deer mean, hanging up, Cam, or just laying on the no, ground? laying on the ground like you'd walk up to it in the woods. No um, kidding. Mm-hmm. And I got pictures. I got a picture of it like that I'm trying to. Um, I can't get on look at messages through that, but... Um, yeah, so I, I told Mark, gosh, I said, if I knew it was this small, I wouldn't have came over. I was just laughing, joking with him. He wouldn't have made the drive if I knew it was, wasn't going to be that big. But, yeah, I said, a lot of, a lot of hooping and hollering and celebrating and high-fiving. <laughs> just fun being around and stuff like that. And I, I can, You don't see it like it every day. I mean, that's a that's a real big deer. I mean, the, yeah, the mass carried with it. Every day. You know, the mass, the best way I described on the mass was that the tines were as big around as most deer's main beams. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> that's and, and impressive. you know, the, the, sometimes mass diminishes time length on deer. This one, it, I mean, when you look at it, but this one, it didn't affect it much because they were, the tines were tall. They just didn't look that tall, I guess I should say, because the mass was so big because the, the H3 was still six inches in spots and the tines were 13 and an eighth on the G2s. Wow. Um, it just had everything. It, I mean, it had three abnormals that, had they not been there, the deer would be number two in the state of Iowa with bow. Um, as it sets and when the smoke cleared, the final score of the place is about 12th all time in Iowa with bow. Man. It's 187, 3 eighths net typical. You know, the typical frame was 202, so it's, and that was a 6 by 5 so you're going to lose that on the, the way right. the Boone and Crockett system is, you're going to lose that G5 on the net score. Um, but just an incredible deer. And uh, the mount on the thing's great, too. I mean, uh, over there at Old Bar Taxi, mean, Julian Loker did an excellent job on the on the mount. And over there, when I um, scored it was dry, he had the mount done up. It looked, they always look way better, way bigger when they're on the mount, you know. I mean, they just, they just do a um, great mount on the deer. And, the whole thing came together pretty good, but that was a real impressive deer. That's one of the bigger typicals. I mean, kept seen in a while too. It's a cool yeah, deer. That is really a cool deer. And uh, for anybody that uh, didn't catch that previous podcast with Mark, I, I suggest go back and listen. I literally got with Mark. I don't know. Uh, I want to say within 24 hours of him killing that deer. So it's a really good pot podcast. Just due to the fact that it was, you know, really fresh in Mark's memory a lot of the stuff that it recounts in that hunt is, you know, just right off the tip of his tongue because it just happened. So it was really, it was semi live and that, you know, it's a cool experience to share that with Mark. And, uh, you know, that's really a once in a lifetime type of typical. It's just unreal. Yeah. It was really, uh, I was there when they, 
um, hung it off the loader bucket. That the infamous picture of the oh yeah, yeah that's loader, right. loader bucket. I I took that with my cell phone. I said Mark was backing up, and I said stop, stop, and just everything was perfect there. And I took that picture, and it was just a cool picture. And you can really see how big the whole body and rack is when it's in the loader bucket. <laughs> that was just yeah, a cool crazy. picture. I took that, but um. Yeah, I was over there the whole thing when they took the head off the uh, carcass and took the skull plate, you know, had it just on the skull plate. We went in the house right then, and um, after we were done with that, and I green scored it and came up with a number and, um, slightly higher. They shrink a little bit, you know. They're, they're not going to shrink five or eight inches of deer wool in that um, uh, drying time. What shrinks the most is the inside spread and some of the mass you lose. And, but that's about it I've noticed on these deer. What would you say that is, Cam? Well, on a deer that big, which is exceptionally big, but what would you say you would lose in that? Is it 60 days? that the drying 60 time? day drying period. I want to say that one, I should know my numbers better. The first time I scored it, I think it was 188 and 6 eighths net. And then the second time I was 187 and 3 eighths. So what are we looking at, an inch and 3 eighths? Yeah, yeah. It dried inch and a half. It dried, so some of the some of the mass, you know, um, and the spread. I, I've compared score sheets before, looked at them, and he's stay consistent with everything. I mean, uh, you'll see the, the the shrinkage that it does a little bit, but it's not a lot. It's not a huge, huge number. I haven't seen any big scored a lot of good ones over the years, and I haven't seen any big drops. On, on yeah. The, I wouldn't assume they do, uh, to be honest. But, no. no. Uh, well, I know you put a list out, Cam, recently of you know some of the deer you scored. So I'm just going to kind of go down the list, and we'll talk about. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some of these deer. But a 199 and two eighths Iowa typical, uh, two two yeah, or two twenty six yep. and two eighths non typical. So let's just start with those two. Um, the 199 and two eighths was a. Um Muzzle to kill. It netted 185 and a half. That was a great day. I scored that at the Iowa Deer Show, I believe on a Friday night. First night I got up there. That Friday night at the Deer Show, you know, uh, the Iowa Show just missed the, all this COVID stuff last year because a week after that I was supposed to go to Illinois and uh, score deer, score antlers for the Shed Club and do that show. And we didn't because COVID shut it down. So people kept asking all spring, are they going to have an Iowa Show? I said, oh, yeah, they're going to have it. When they had it, and the talk was, well, it's either going to be a flop or there's going to be a ton of people, and there was a ton of people. You wouldn't have even known that there was a uh, virus or anything like that going around because, I mean, there was a, it was a real good show, real good turnout. Friday evening, now, we didn't score this many, but there was that many there. They lay a lot of them on the floor where they, where they stage them out when we go get them to pick them up and score them, you know. But right. Friday, evening, uh, Friday evening, 164 bucks came in. Wow. Yeah, that that's crazy. what I... You go, I, I could tell it was getting real full in there. I mean, it's just, it's like going to work. It's a lot of fun, but you're just nonstop, got a rack in front of you and doing um, your thing, you know, and getting it done upright and all, and you go grab another rack and it just never ends. And it, it, to get caught up was just, it seemed impossible. But finally, we, we got caught up around Saturday afternoon. We were, we were getting caught up to where I could take a little break and walk around the show with some friends for a little bit. And then Sunday was just some people that bring them in just for the day to get scored. But that's the busiest Friday. And that's what the talk was with the people that had done the show for many more years than me. And they said, man, this is probably one of the busiest Fridays we've ever had. That's crazy. That's perfect. good, though. I, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I was supposed to be on my way down there. And unfortunately for me, I was exposed to somebody with COVID. Mm. And I yeah. hadn't got out of that quarantine time frame yet. Yeah. And I just had... You know, I was trying to be a responsible adult, and I, I just didn't feel right about going and potentially, you know, who knows what happened. I did end up getting tested, and, you know, I was totally I was cleared with the test, yeah. came back negative, but uh, still I just didn't feel right. Uh, I actually took the test, yeah. got my results back, and was still debating about going because it did come up negative. Yeah. And I was just like, I just can't do it until whatever, the yeah. quarantine's over. So that was a bummer for me. I was bummed. Yeah. I had to stay in, and I, I didn't get to go home for Christmas because I was around people that had COVID, and I had to have a test done the day after Christmas, so I stayed in Iowa, had a test done. And out here, I don't know how it is everywhere else. I've told people that. They kind of laughed. They said, 
you pull up to the pharmacy drive-up window and they hand you the COVID test and you do it yourself. Tip oh, your head wow. back, take a, yeah. take the swab up to touch your up your nose, you know, and hand it back to them, and they will email you or text you the results a few days later. And I had to do that, um, so I didn't film for Christmas at all. So I guess the Iowa show was like my Christmas, <laughs> a lot yeah, of fun. For and sure. My, yeah. my brother came out and seen me and visited and whatever. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. That's how it goes sometimes. And, but uh, the back of the deer though that. Um, that 199. Go ahead, 199. Was... Yeah, that was a real good deer. It was this big 6x7 uh, typical muzzleloader kill. The guy uh, shot it the day after Christmas. That's a giant. But, yeah, that was a real big deer, super buck. And then the uh, 226 um, scored that with the Iowa. So that was a tricky buck. Had a lot of just weird points on it and had to really sort through the rack. I um, I always like to get other uh, scores opinions. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys have scored uh, more years than me. It's just always good, good to get other opinions. So, got several of the guys' opinions on certain questions I had. And, um, it took about two hours to score that year because it was at the uh, odd rack and uh, had like 15 inches broke off of it, and it still was 226 gross. Heck wow. of a deer. That would have been 240 uh, inch buck. It had been 240 had it been intact because the guy that shot it sent me chalk cam pictures was showing me pictures. It's kind of neat, the deer show. Um, I did it kind of on purpose this year. I got a table set front and center so people could kind of watch score deer. And, you know, I wanted to see and talk to people that came by. So I'm scoring some of this deer, and I don't know who's who watching me. And I got their number uh, in front of me on the she with to his paperwork out. So. A lot of the guys there would call the guys and tell them they got the deer scored. I just text them and say, here's what your deer scored. And they're stay- I look up and they said, right here, and they wave at me. They're standing right there in front of me. They've been watching me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. And you go over there and talk to them, you know, shake the hand, tell them good deer and all that. And it's, it's pretty cool. You know, you get to meet a lot of good people doing that. But, um, like, for that deer, he did the same thing. It was pretty neat, though. But, um, the guy sent me, he texted me pictures, truck and pictures of the deer when it was, had that. The uh, left main beam was broke off after, like, the G3, and it was probably, like, 15 inches, 12, 15 inches, something like that, he said. No kidding. It, Man. It had been right there, 240, yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's a giant. That. So, the, keep it moving just a little bit, Cam. Uh-huh. It, and we can talk about any one of these, but that, I'm I'm going to spoil everybody with just throwing out these numbers that are basically 200 and above because it's so crazy that I just think Iowa had such a good year, but... Uh, 227 and four eights, and stop me when you want, Cam. 215 and two eights, 209 and four eights, 209 and three eights, and 231 yep, and, and zero eights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop at the 231. But, um, so the 227, kid shot that one, and this is hard for me. The first thing I got to remember all these numbers go in my head. But at 227, went to his house and scored that. Shot that that big corn friend we had. This past year, across the Midwest, he shot that the 4th of October, 227. That was a super good buck. Um, and that, uh, 222 and 6 eights, but... I'm sorry, Cam, he shot that when? The first week of October, the 4th. Okay. 4th wow. of October. No way. We had that big cold front. We had that big cold front through That's one. right. That's right, yep. There was a lot of big deer killed that weekend. That week, uh, yeah. All across, all across the Midwest. Not only I, but all across the Midwest, a lot of big deer were killed. Um... That was a real good buck. Uh, he ended up taking first place in the Archer non tip with that deer at the Iowa Deer Show. Got oh, shot. Did he? Yeah. Super good deer. Then what did you say the next is two fifteen? Two fifteen and two eighths and then a two oh nine and four eighths. The two oh nine and four eighths was Mark Luster's. We've already talked about. Yeah. That was a gross on Mark's. The two fifteen was um that was a real good buck. Uh that was Kitty Schaefer's buck. It was uh, Bo Kill, the same area down there around Luster. Um, that was a pretty interesting. It had a unique point on it, what I mean by that, because the, the G2 came up and it took a 90-degree angle straight out after when it came up. So you can measure a time, the longest outside curve. So I showed the guys, I said, I'm going to measure from the outside and do that curve. But I said, it's going to be longer from the inside of the beam out. And I measured it like that. It's, of course, longer. And 
you don't you don't come across that very often. That's what's kind of unique on that deer. Which way did it curve out? It came. You know how most most racks you'll measure from the outside of the beam on most points. Yeah. You measure from the outside coming in. It came up, but it went out towards like out with the beam. The, the G two. Oh, okay. The, wow. It's made like a like a hockey stick shape yeah. out beam, almost yeah. nine more more ninety. And it was uh, a pretty cool point on that deer. Just cause that's just what I remember on that rack. I had that 90 degree bend on that point. But that was a that was a super good buck. Big long beams on it, 28, 29 beams, 21 inside. Big frame, big frame deer. And uh, he had it up there at the Iowa State. It was a real good one. Then the um, 209 to 38s was um, a 10 year old girl shot that in the early muzzlers or early youth season in Iowa. Wow. That's the 209 cool. was out. But, yeah, that was a super good buck. It was 198 net. I went to their house, scored that. They got a hold of me. They, were, they weren't too far from where I live. Like um, a really young girl, right? Eighth or ninth grade? Ten-year-old. Oh, a ten-year-old. Younger than I thought. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yep. Ten-year-old shot that. With her. The dad told me, they were just out. They said, we're just going to shoot anything that comes by tonight. I believe it's what he told me. They said, we're going to shoot anything. May have been the first buck they seen, or just any deer, because there's out of the youth hunting, you know. But uh, that deer came by. That's the deer they shot. <laughs> wow, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, two thirty one and zero eight. That deer I scored. Um, at a, over to Taxidermis that I hang out at sometimes. Go there and see what he has, and that just is kind of a. It was there. I didn't know nothing about it. Didn't realize what deer it was or nothing until I drove away and I thought, huh, that's that deer such and such was hunting. And I didn't realize it just had it in my hands. And so I called him up and said, hey, that deer you were looking for, I just scored it. And he said, really? I said, yeah. It's over at uh, Wade Samen's Stack Army. <laughs> no kidding. So, yeah, I, I was a strange coincidence that just lined up like that. And I didn't realize it was that deer. I'd seen trail cam pictures of it and I had never. I had heard it was killed, but I'd never, that's about where it ended. I just, I heard, rumor was it was killed. And, uh, it was killed. It was a bow kill. And, um, like I said, I ran into it over there at Wade's and, uh, I had it in my hand a couple hours looking at it and then finally scored it. And I didn't realize it was that deer until, until I drove away that, that evening. <laughs> no way. That was, a, that was a super, super good buck. Yeah. So that might have been the highest. That might have been the highest gross scoring deer killed at Iowa. Strive. It probably was that, that I oh, could. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean that's a giant man. That's, oh, that's yeah. so insane. So yep. Uh, <laughs> next, you had a two hundred and zero eight Missouri non typical. Yeah, that was a cool buck. Uh, um, guy got a hold of Facebook. A lot of these people just you know Facebook gets more. Uh, um, advertisement for scorn than anything, I think, as far as people getting a hold of just in social media. These guys got a hold of me and asked if I'd come down and score deer, and I told him I would and uh, went down there. I'd seen pictures of that deer, but that was a cool deer. The G2 on the deer was 16 inches. Was that north Missouri? Yeah. 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 Had, had some of the tallest G2s I've ever scored. The one G2 was, like I said, 16, 16 even. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize when you said that. 16 is insane for a G2. Oh. I mean, that's oh, insane. I've only really scored a couple that were that, that got up around that. I've only really scored one longer than that, and that was years ago in Illinois. And that's before I was an official score. It was 17 and an eighth. And other than that, I did not score a time taller than that 16 and an eighth. That was just. Or sixteen, it was sixteen even. Yeah, that's I crazy. Not, that, that thing really stretched the tape out there on the G G two measurement. That was a cool deer. It was a boat kill. He shot that off the ground like a seven yards. He told me. No way. That's neat. Yeah. You know? And wow. again, he shot. I think I think he shot at the fourth of October also. No kidding. That cold, front, that cold front, the big cold front that went across early. We had. I mean, those big deer dropping all over. It seemed like and um. That was, I was telling him that. I said, yeah, I said, I think a deer scored up in Iowa and killed the same day you killed this one. Wow. So, I mean, what are the odds? But those cold fronts are magic. That's what it does in the fall. They're magic. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this is good information. I mean, Cam said this now a couple times, so, you know, it's something to really pay attention to. So next on that list, Cam, a 224 and 2.8 Iowa non-typical. That's, that was a beast. That there, um, uh, he had that at the Iowa show, scored it over just uh, mom's house, so my Cedar Rapids where he's from. And uh, that uh, his brother actually got a hold of me on that. And I said, when he started talking on Facebook Messenger, I said, is your brother by the check, such and such? He said, yeah. I said, I said oh, oh, okay, that's cool. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come score it there for you sometimes. They couldn't find it. anybody would, they could work out their schedule to score the deer. I said, oh, we'll work something out. I'll come score But That deer had real big mass through the tines and a uh, super good guy. I killed that buck. Uh, he's super excited. Uh, finally get it scored. And um, it uh, came off a family farm. They've had in the family for since like 1930. And, his brother, four years earlier, shot a 209 gross off the same farm. So they got they got, him, they got a good spot. It sounds like yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, what that, time that, of year was that? Was that bow season as well? No, that was a gun. That was a gun. That was uh, I believe the fifth of December, opening day. I want to say. Okay. So, I I gotta have to look up the actual date, but I know it was a gun kill. So the next two. I'll just rip them off. A 190, 198 and 5.8 Iowa non typical. And then you had a 203 and 08 Iowa non typical. It looks like maybe that one was from 2019, though. Yep. The kid that shot that 203 was, was uh, from, uh, yeah, that was a 19 bow. That was a bow kill. Great deer. Super long brow tines. Um, He'd not had a score to fish or anything. They had a number on it that they'd done themselves, and they were close. And I told them I'd make it over there one day, and I finally did. And um, got to be pretty good friends with them and all. A lot of these people I score with or score the deer for just get acquaintances or open up doors. It's pretty cool. You know, you get to know people, and it's pretty neat. Um, and then I won that day. It was a deadhead that he picked up. Um, that was a good buck. We thought it would break 200, but it was real close. Super good box. So, but yeah, um, that, those are giants too. So, mm-hmm. I think the last two uh, we want to talk about here, Cam, is uh, man, I just lost it. But uh, oh, a two thirteen and four eighths Iowa non typical, and then I want to talk mm-hmm. about that Kansas two hundred eleven zero eights Kansas non typical. The two thirteen was killed by a youth hunter. Kid was thirteen years old. Him and his brother went out. I scored that up at his mom's house. Right before I was trying to score that one. It was dry and all, but they wanted to score before the deer show, so I went up there and scored it. And uh, that was a really uh, cool deer. I first seen it over at Wade Salmon's uh, taxi. He mounted the deer, and he mentioned to me something about it. They wanted to score it some time. I told him I'd try and get around to it. And I, I held the rack back in October. That deer was killed youth season. And uh, so I went to the house. It was on the mountain. The mountain looked great and all, and, Scored that deer there, and uh, um, they kind of had an idea what they the number they had put a number on. They, they scored it, and they were real close again. Mostly people were close for the most part. There's just some judgment calls sometimes on the racks, but that was a super buck. Uh, he said he was 13 years old. Shot at it. He told me he shot at 275 yards. Just got lucky and hit it. <laughs> wow! Wow! I think he was shooting the 350 or 450 legend, one of the two. I, I think he told me. Him and his brother was like 17 or 18, and he was 13. He just went out and went out and shot it, and he took him out, and he ended up getting out. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yep. Um, the 211, now that was probably the second most impressive deer at the quest hunt I've seen. That was a real good deer. Um, Bo Kill, kid shot it. Uh, I believe I talked to him down there at that show. He shot it like a, a day before the Kansas season was going out for the year. Oh, next, no way. Next to, next to the last day, he missed it earlier in the year, from what I remember him telling me. He missed it in the year bow hunting. He shot it next to the last day of the season and killed it. And that deer was a great deer. It's had everything, 28-inch 20, beams, 21 inside. Um, for having so few points, it scored really well. It's 211 gross, and I think it netted 207, but... Just an awesome deer. That was a super impressive deer. Big, big typical frame. Um, 
I like that deer. Just real clean looking, uh, but it's non tip, but just a clean looking non tip. Didn't have a lot of extra trash or anything. Got a got a big portion of its score from the big typical frame. Wow. Well, that's really cool. Just, just a giant deer, Mr. Yeah. Super. I was real impressed with that buck. That's nice. Yeah, that's real nice. So before I let you go here, Cam, I mean, we just covered kind of some of the best ones, I would say, over the year. Would I mean, unless I'm forgetting something, but it would. Would you say that was your top box, Cam? Yeah, I looked through the I looked through the notes um, before I uh, was doing the podcast here, just so I can kind of refresh my memory. But um, I might have two more that I have to go score, two or two hundreds. But I'm about you know the scoring slows down this time of year. Sure. Most of the most of the scoring occurs from the first week of January clear through till you know the spring deer shows are over. So about now, and uh, then it'll slow down a little bit. Then you might it might pick up to this hit and miss where people need something scored. But yeah, I've been just trying to keep track of everything I score over the years. It's just kind of it's good to have that information on hand, and um, if people ever want a copy of a score sheet or something that I scored in there, I need to check something or look at something. It's good for that. But yeah, yeah, no, that's real cool. Now, yeah. would you say, Cam? Uh, how how are you feeling? I know you've been in, living in Iowa now for several years, and you've done a lot of these shows. So have you correlated anything to kind of come into, let's say, hopefully we don't have some drought or something, but have you come up with any ideas correlation-wise between scoring and what you can almost predict for the next year, like say this coming season will be good or bad or vice versa? You mentioned drought, and I've, I've got to dig into that a little bit more just dig some numbers up for something else I'm working on. But um, I've always said and felt like the drought year is the best year for big deer, for producing big racks. It doesn't make any sense, I know. But the drought year, and I'll just leave it that for now, the drought year is, from what I have seen, the numbers and the top end numbers, the drought year is the best year. It's not good for farming. No. But for racks, for for deer racks, it's it really surprised you. And you Everybody's going to be surprised when I throw these numbers together and do something I'm going to be working on here with somebody. And uh, it's it's really neat. To, you can look back in history and see it. You can look back in, in drought years back in history and see it. They correlate with the numbers of the top end deer. I've always wondered that. So I was looking through some numbers from years ago on Boone and Crockett numbers and drought years. And it's just kind of neat that it lines up like that. There's a strange yeah. coincidence. It's like it's strange coincidence. It's like that. So prediction wise, can you give me give me a thought for twenty twenty one? What are you thinking? Strong year? You know, I don't think it'll be it's it might be early to predict it already. Um it was a rough winter. I mean that's the only bad thing I can say. It was a, right. it was a tough winter. Yeah. So there's going to be, there's always going to be some big deer killed. Is it going to be a banner year? I don't know. It's a little, it's a little too early to tell yet. Right. Was yeah. uh. The only thing that concerns me would be would be that rough winter. But I mean, there's some big sheds people found. There's gonna be some big deer around. I I, uh, I know several buddies that had pictures of some big deer. And, um, there'll be some big ones killed this fall for sure. But as far as like a the, the standout years in Iowa, I've noticed is 08, uh, 2012. This year was really good. Last year was really good. Um, 21. I don't know. It's still. It's, it's exciting. I just. I don't want to say. Yeah, it's more, we'll year just say safely. It's up in the air for 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so so far, I mean, I I just don't know how to predict that yet. I just. I yeah. think it'll be good, but will it be a banner? I I just don't know yet. It's yeah. Just, uh, That's all right. Yeah. I I mean, if anybody dies into deer numbers, it's Cam. So I figured I'd had to I had to throw that out there, but I I absolutely. No, Cam, like, that's kind of a loaded question. You know what I mean? That's kind of hard yeah. to answer. So. But it is what it is. But anyway, Cam, thanks so much for your time today, man, and uh, yeah. thanks for sharing all those big deer stories. And, and uh, one thing I know about Cam, if that deer didn't grow it, he doesn't get an eighth of an inch. So Cam is one <laughs> of the most, <laughs> you know, genuine scorers of deer, and he prides himself in talking big net scoring deer. So uh, thanks so much, Cam, and and let everybody know, Cam, between, you know, Tiki Talk, Snap, you know, Facebook, Insta, where they can find you. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to reach. It's like I said, any of those social media outlets, I'm, you can find me there. Just uh, 
you know, they're scoring or something, get a hold of them and we'll work something out. I'm sure we can. But, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. It was fun chatting with you about the numbers and deer and a little bit of that. So, Yep, absolutely. And uh, every week, guys, you know you can find us on YouTube, Outdoor Podcast Channel, Amazon Music, iTunes. And uh, thanks again, Cam. We'll see you again real soon. Yep, you bet.